2 million, 5 million, a building, a building, a building, a building. How many people you have got five buildings supported by five people in your community? Let me see your hands. Not one college, and we have five, and we're going to have six and seven. Now, guess why? Because we started with our partnership with the foundation. And I said to you, it's how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Our foundation was started in 1973. We have over $34 million. When we started this foundation, you know what people said? Who's going to give money to a two-year public education that's been in existence for four or five years? Nobody is. We're going to give money to Harvard and Ohio State and all these other institutions. But guess what? We started a foundation with people in the community, with people who were business leaders, people who owned companies, people who were interested in arts, people who were leaders in the community. And what happened is we ended up doing one thing that was very important. We have, 50, oops, we have 57 members of our board. The reason why we picked that large number was that everyone on that board could have an interest in something that they believed in in that college. And they could take the ball and run with it. Whether it was in industry, whether it was in arts, whether it was in culture. And gifts start coming in. Gifts start coming in like artwork. We didn't say we were going to ask for art. Came in for statues coming in. It came in now for somebody who says, I'd, I'd like to do something for the college. I like the scholarships. I like to help minorities. I like to help the average student, not the smartest student. And somebody said, I do want to help the smartest student. So when you had all these people coming in and contributing their time and efforts, number one in the state of Ohio and 15th in the country, when no one said we could do this. And it started from coming to an ACCT meeting conference just like this and taking it back home and running with the ball. Now, that foundation today gave away $600,000 last year in scholarships to 360 people. And if you look at that over the last 10 years, that's $6 million. 3,600 students got a chance to get an education because of that scholarship and because of this conference. And if you don't think that makes a difference, you're wrong. And I don't want to hear anyone saying anything wrong about attending this and spending college money to come to a nice hotel in Toronto, which you deserve for spending all that time on a board and all the meetings to come here and share what you know and the knowledge that you have. And you have two functions to do when you leave here. Number one is to take something back to your community college that will help it. And the second thing is that once you are successful, you have an obligation to come up here and get on the stage and tell the rest of the people at ACCT what's good and what's bad and how you made money and how you made your college grow. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that, folks. <laughs> But anyway, you do have two obligations. And the payback is for us coming here and sharing with you. And I'm so proud of Lorain County Community College because, folks, it's the number one community college in the United States of America. And we have the best president, Roy Church. I mean, that's my opinion. I'm sure there's other opinions out here. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, getting back to what I was saying, about the large members and getting somebody involved in gifts and uh, golf and different ways to raise money. We had one individual who loved to play golf. He had a great relationship with Jack Nicholas, And he asked Jack, would you let us put your name on our scholarship program, our golf uh, program? And that program has raised over a million dollars just because he had an interest in golf. And it didn't look like he was going to come into doing something in business or education. So a large board is perfect for the foundation. Uh, 
All right. <clears throat> we changed the uh, mission of the college. Why did we change the mission of the college? Because I thought that that 40 acres up there could be used to uh, develop and bring businesses to Lorraine Community College. IBM, I thought IBM would come here. But I said, IBM's not going to come here if we don't have a nice facility. And then at the same time, we're going to help local industries grow. But there was no roads. There was nothing but vacant land. We had a road going straight down that road that was called Burns Road. It was all um, chuck holes, and, and it belonged to the city of Illyria. They didn't have any money to repair it. So I convinced the board that we should take it over. And uh, in 90 days, we'll be able to pave that road. It hadn't been paved in 20 years. And put all the infrastructure for our development, for our high-tech park. How could you do it in 90 days? Well, what I said was, well, why don't we borrow the money? And how are we going to pay it back? I said, well, we'll borrow the money. Uh, and who's going to who loan us the money? Our local banks do it. We borrowed the money from them, gave us the money. We did the improvements. The money was from parking fees revenue. So we paid it off over a few years from the parking fees. Nice way to make that happen, right? So now we had this park. Some of the problems when you get involved in econ economic development, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems with your board. Who can go in that park? What kind of businesses should go there? Should we limit it? Should we expand it? And finally, some of the things that will happen, you have doubters. You have board members who are against other people, but you've got to work for the common cause of the college. And I'll give you an example how this was not easy, folks, because now once we did this, they said, OK, we've got to pass. Dick, why don't you run with the ball and see what you can do for economic development? So I had four companies to go out there with somewhere between 40 and 50,000 square feet of buildings to start this thing off. And one of them says, <clears throat> Well, that's a manufacturing company. I said, so what? You said high tech. I said, what are they, man this is not a steel plant out here. Folks, this was a, a, a nice manufacturing company, light manufacturing, and I said, we should have it. Well, they gave me a hard time about that. Then another one came up and said, look, here is a major automobile dealer who had 50 dealerships, had, had two or 300 people working for his company, and we're not going to sell cars on the campus, but one individual board member said, I don't want to use car dealer out there. OK. Well, we overcame that by over convincing that individual that it's for better for the college and the community. And he backed down, but he still didn't change his mind. But thank God we approved it, because later on, I will show you why, how it will come back to help us later on. So those are some of the problems. The next thing, we had an opportunity to buy 200 acres of land next to the college. Next to the college. <clears throat> we had originally bought our land in 1963 for $500,000, 250 acres. Because a builder was going bankrupt, I convinced the board to buy the 250, 200 acres for $22,000 more money than we paid for the whole campus 20 years ago. How many would make that deal right now? $500,000 to buy 200 acres that you'll have for the rest of your life, no matter what you're ever going to use it for. We made it happen. We made it happen in our budget to make that happen. Of course, I got criticized for that. And so does many colleges. Here, campuses and companies cozy up. University enlist firms as development partners. Question about mission. God, they're still talking about mission in 19, 2008, 2009. About our mission. And it goes on, it says, uh, uh, express, uh, express script at University of uh, Missouri, $50 million. Uh, another Clemson, BMW. 
90,000 graduate engineering. It was, it was an opportunity we couldn't pass up, the chancellor said. The school has acquired more than 100 acres since 91. The, university, the university's decision to bring private industry to campus highlights a growing push by urban universities to spur economic development, both in reclaiming and declining neighborhoods around their campus and assuming a larger role in the creation of jobs. Creation of jobs. We expect to take the lead. And guess who's taking the lead in Ohio? Lorraine County Community College has created over a thousand jobs and growing. But it raised the question whether the university should be playing the role of developer to what degree they should be. And the bottom line it says, the, the chancellor said, the public expects more than just the degree factory. Isn't that true? Are you, are you, are you a community college or not? The community college, your mission is what the community needs. It's not what you think it should be. Okay. Okay. So, now, we'll go on. Stalker Center. This was a unique situation where a partnership in 1980 between the state of Ohio, Lorraine County Community College, the foundation, and the public. Nobody would give us any money for a performing arts center. So we went to the state and said, look, if we put in some money and you put in some money, will you give us some money for classrooms? that we can put around that building. $7 million building in 1980. Financed with college money, private money, and foundation money, and other foundations contributed to this. And by the way, do you see that name, Stocker? He also was a member of his family, his wife, and his daughter of our district board and our foundation board. Nord, on Nordson, also on our foundation board. Got a building. A John A. Spitzer Conference Center, a conference center that had over 60,000 people last year used it. By the way, John A. Spitzer was an automobile dealer. He was the one that was coming on the campus. PC Camp Bannon a leader in our community in engineering, and uh, his son was on our foundation board. He wanted to leave something to his father for his dedication and work that he had done all his life. Another building. The Entrepreneur Innovation Center. Has anyone got some money out there? We'd sure like to have your name on that building. It will be, trust me, there'll be somebody's name on that building. Partnerships, we talk about partnerships here. This is our university partnership where we have, a, we have brought eight different universities to our campus uh, to educate our students and make, instead of making our students go to their campuses. And we're very fortunate in most of those programs, they're allowing us three plus one. So the student is paying community college fees for three years and the normal fees of those universities, either a two-year or one-year program. And we have over 40 programs with a BA in, 